I made that decision because I believed that the Department of Afro-American Studies bearing the name of Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois had to last. Call that hope, call that optimism, call it faith, whatever. I believed in that very idea. Now it was in some ways like someone's, someone standing on the top of a mountain. Don't ask me why. And that person is forced to jump. And you know what? She, I choose the pronoun purposefully. I know this. Jumps because she knows that one of two things will happen. Either the earth will come up to meet her feet, or she will sprout wings. The idea that this would be a freestanding department took that kind of faith on the part of those who first had the idea, and certainly on the part of the rest of us who decided to jump from the mountain. It was a new, in a sense, adventure, but I'm gonna also say it was new sacred work to make happen what had never happened before in our country. The enslavement of black women, men, children was today we would say 401 years ago, however many years it was in 1970. And there was still no place in the curriculum, in the canon, that even acknowledged the fullness of our presence. Yeah. Of course, there were courses on Black history and, you know, de departments would join with the rest of the university and celebrate Black History Month as if the complexity of our journey could be contained in a month. In a month. In a course. Beginning a Black Studies or an Afro-American Studies department was like insisting that Black history and culture and artistry is an everyday reality. So I was, I was beyond excited. I saw this new department as the reality of a dream that so many had had. And when we look back over Black history and her story. We can't take credit for this idea. All of a sudden we thought there should be scholarship and teaching and activism related to the Black experience. Carter G. Woodson thought of it. W.B. Du Bois thought of it. Anna Julia Cooper thought of it. Oh, yeah. But we were the ones charged to do it. To be black and woman, to be subjected to systemic racism and sexism, that I had the responsibility to bring as youngins like to say, my whole self 
to work. When you hope there, yes. I couldn't enter New Africa House as a black individual. I had to enter as a black woman. Each of us has multiple identities and that we need to consider those identities and not settle for the singularity of being. So egotistical it may sound, but we, you and I, always felt a sense of responsibility yes. to stand up, speak out, Go to the floor. Yeah, go to the floor. <laughs> to speak in terms of the diversity of Black women. We taught that course not only out of the written scholarship about Black women. We taught it out of lived experiences. Yes. Yes. Yes, we did. But what I feel compelled to say is that we had simultaneously at UMass a Department of Afro-American Studies that needed to do better on the gender question. We did, yes. Across campus, we had a women's studies program that needed to do better on the race question. Absolutely. And so you and I, because of our dual identities, we did our best to, in a sense, bridge the two, to find ways in which women's studies is a program and Afro-American studies as a department could yes. collapse. S to T, S to T. We got dressed in our best. Yes, we did. Went into that hall and prepared to hear a brilliant presentation by Chenua Achebe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> was introduced by the chancellor and our brother began. Mm, mm, mm. When Chenoa Achebe started to deconstruct the writings of Joseph Conrad, it was plain. It was as plain as day Yes. The racism in Conrad's right. You could feel people squirming and <laughs> find a bodily position that would make it easier for them to take, to take the truth. No one, I'm willing to say, in the W.E.B. Du Bois Department of Afro-American Studies was truly surprised because we knew that Chinua is not only a brilliant writer, he's a man of intense integrity. That lecture was a perfect response to a question that was of course being raised. Well, why do we need black studies? When what, what, what's black studies all about? Yeah. Chero Achebe stood and presented a lecture that can only be defined as black excellence. Mm -hmm. The, the detail of, of, of the scholarship, the weaving of the various pieces of Joseph Conrad into 
the realities faced on the African continent and in the diaspora, it was brilliantly done. Our sister Shirley Graham was a genuine and powerful connection to her late husband. Yes. It's one thing to read about Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. And if you're gonna read, you must begin with the souls of black folk. It's another to do the research or these days for young scholars to perhaps not admit it, but do a whole lot of Googling rather than going to an edifice. But here was Shirley Graham Du Bois who could speak with such authenticity about the life and work of W.E. Du Bois. And let me underline and her own work. When she walked into New Africa House and began to share from the, from the wealth of her experiences, we knew we had been truly blessed. But as I think about the department now, Esther T, I have to just be honest and tell you, I am mighty proud. I'm mighty proud to have had even an itsy bitsy, or as you and I as Southerners would say, a T90. A T90, yes. T90. Role to play. That I had that makes me feel grateful to see what has become of that department, makes me feel mighty proud. And so now as graduate students are being fully, I mean fully engaged in black experiences historically, in terms of the arts, culturally and politically, this is, this is no ordinary, Enterprise, look ahead and imagine years and years from now where that department will be in terms of scholarship, in terms of informed and soulful teaching, and yes, in terms of always standing up for what is right. 